So our next guest is founding chairman of the Business for New Europe group. Roland Rudd is also co-founder and senior partner at financial PR firm Finsbury. Added to that, he's chairman of Tate's corporate advisory group and a member of the Center for European Reform Advisory Board. Pleased to say he's with me in the studio now. Good to see you. Thanks so much for coming in. Yeah, welcome on the show. So, I mean, we've been speaking about Greece all morning, all week, in fact. And interestingly, we spoke to Goldman Sachs asset management chairman uh, Jim O'Neill in Russia, and yeah. he was saying, look, European leaders, they just need to sort it out. So why haven't they been able to sort it out? Well, they've let it drag on too long. I, I, I completely agree with Jim on that. But I think we'll probably see an orderly restructuring because the consequences uh, of anything else are too ghastly to think about. And for Britain, I mean, it's not just the sort of exposure we have to Greek banks, which is around 10 billion. You, you know, if, if they end up with a catastrophic default, we could see a sort of domino effect. And if it happened to Ireland, mm. where our exposure is over 200 billion, it becomes really serious. So for British jobs and investment, we've got to see this thing through. And that's why, of course, Britain has agreed to help through the stability fund and obviously through the IMF. We were speaking a little bit earlier about the prospect of Greece leaving the euro. And I'm wondering if the kind of new uh, bout of crisis, the new phase in the debt crisis that we've entered now sort of resurrected that debate a little bit. But tell, tell me why you think that won't happen. No, no. Th I mean, there's no mechanism for it. But it's not just that there's no mechanism for it. It's not in Greece's interest and it's not in any other of the Eurozone's members' interest for it to happen. So I don't think it will happen. I don't think it can happen. Uh, you can obviously leave the European Union under mm. Article 50, but there's no article to leave the Eurozone. And the idea that it could be forced out or, or it, in the case of a default, I just don't think will happen. I mean, interestingly, in, in the last century, a number of southern uh, states in, in, in the USA defaulted. And of course, there wasn't then a central bank, but they didn't obviously leave the union. Uh, nor would Greece. I don't actually think there will be default, but if, even if there was a default, it wouldn't mean they'd leave the, leave the euro. And it's not even in the interest of any other member, including Germany, which is the one that some people say will just get fed up with having to pay the bills and will therefore leave. I don't think that'll happen. And Roland, just looking at some of the points outlined in the report, you yeah. know, about the European economy, about the need to get public spending on a sustainable footing, I mean, that really seems to ring true now, doesn't it? Yeah. When you look at what's happening in Greece, the lack of sort of cross party consensus when it comes to reform um, and it now seems that it, it, what's happening in Greece almost sort of shows the difficulty of getting those structural reforms yeah. through for the rest of Europe it's just not happening people can't stomach it that's true but we must remember that you know Greece has made big strides I mean they've actually voted to change the retirement age from 55 to 65 now it's actually being phased in and of course what we'd like it to happen faster and further these reforms and like that particular issue to happen earlier but they are going in the right direction we should give them some credit for that and I think what we're saying in our pamphlet today is interestingly you know we talk a lot about Doha we talk a lot, lot about what we can do about world trade but actually if we just got the single market completed you know that could be worth 300 billion euros to Europe's economy it makes a huge difference it makes a difference in terms of the digital economy it makes a difference on services where you know 75 percent of each member state mm. Uh, its economy is bound up in services, but only 5% is cross-border. So the, the, the potential in terms of boosting Europe's competitiveness but by actually having the single market implemented is huge and often understated. And then we're trying to remind people in this pamphlet how yeah. important it is. I mean, given you know, EU policymakers seem to be so preoccupied with these short-term crises and, bow, and, and sort of bouts of concerns that keep popping up on the markets about you know, the prospect of default and contagion, all the things that you describe now manifesting themselves, in the markets, it seems that there is this inability to look beyond the short-term problems to address these long-term issues, to boost con competitiveness, complete the single market, as you say, uh, in order to, to make Europe healthier in the long term. So how do they do this when they have these sort of constant short-term fires erupting everywhere? Well, you know, it, it's just a twin-track approach. You've got to deal with the Greece thing first, obviously, because it's the most important. And I, as I say, I think we'll see an orderly restructuring. But in the meantime, you got to have the will to do something about completing the single market. Is that so, there? I don't think it is sufficiently, not at all. And that's why I think if business leaders stand out, and they do in our pamphlet throughout the UK, and we get the same thing from France and Germany, then I think we can get the type of pressure we need on the politicians to realise how important this is. 